today we will discuss about a condition we call FAVIS due to deficiency in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. And as usual, we are going to ask you, how much do you know about this condition? If you read me, then let's start with the case. A six-year-old child brought to you by his parents in the emergency room complained of severe paler, weakness, back pain with persistent vomiting. On taking history, he was well and had no complaint until the day before his presentation, where he and his family were invited to take a lunch of rice and fava bean. On examination, he was found to be feverish with the yellow sclera. Analysis of a sample of his blood in the hematology laboratory give the following data. Measurement Patient Reference range Hemoglobin was 9 It should be between 14 and 18 Hemoglobin is low. Red blood cells was 3.5. It should be 5, which means red blood cells were low. Reticulocytes 3. It should be between 0.5 and 1.5, which means reticulocytes were elevated. What are reticulocytes? Reticulocytes are immature red blood cells without a nucleus, having a granular or reticulated appearance when suitable state. Then unconjugated bilirubin, 300. It should be between 2 and 14, which means unconjugated bilirubin was very elevated. What's unconjugated bilirubin? Simply waste product of hemoglobin breakdown that's taken up by the liver. Then red cell glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase. Not detected. Reference range of glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase is 13. The diagnosis was favism. It's due to glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. Why, how, what? We will discuss about all this. So what's glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency? If symptomatic, we call favism. It's a genetic disorder, X-linked recessive. Results defective glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, which is an enzyme. An error of metabolism that predisposed to red blood cells breakdown. And because of this breakdown of red blood cells, it may cause hemolytic anemia, neonatal joints, and etc. And you should note that whenever there is a condition follows X-linked recessive mode of inheritance, it affects males more than females. Why? Why? First, it's recessive which means it can be normal, carrier, or affected. And we males have XY chromosomes. We cannot be carrier of this mutation because it's related to X chromosome and we only have one X chromosome. So we are either normal or deficient. While in the other hand, females has double X chromosomes. She can be normal, no defect in any X chromosome. She can be deficient, defect in both X chromosomes, it's called hem homozygous. Or she can be intermediate, defect in only one chromosome, it's called heterozygous. So here she is carrier, but not affected. So what's the problem? The problem is in the future, because she can't transmit the mutation to her sons. 
so I hope that makes sense. Glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency is the second most common human enzyme defect after ILDH2 deficiency, being present in more than 400 million people worldwide, results in 33,000 deaths in 2015. Most of the time, this condition is asymptomatic. We cannot call it favism if it's asymptomatic. Favism is always due to glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. But not all glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency results in results favism. But not all glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency results favism. What's the pathophysiology? Normally, normally NADPH maintains the supply of reduced glutathione in the cells. That's used to get rid from free radicals. Free radicals that cause oxidative damage. What are free radicals? Free radicals like hydrogen peroxide H2O2 or nitric oxide NO damage cells by destroying DNA, proteins, cell membranes. So whenever there is a low level of NADPH, there will be elevated level of free radicals. And as you know, red blood cells are at the risk of damage from oxidizing free radicals. But red blood cells are protected from free radicals by the system of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase NADPH glutathione system. So when there is a defect in this system, uh, the free radicals will destroy red blood cells and will cause many problems. So what are glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, NADPH, glutathione, what are they doing? Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is oxidizing glucose 6-phosphate to 6-phosphoglucanolactone and at the same time reducing NADPH to NADP positive. But here's the enzyme named glutathione reductase is oxidizing NADP positive to NAD, NADPH as you see here so when glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is reduced both NADPH and 6-phosphoglucanolactone are also reduced and here the scenario will be like this when there are oxidative agents from certain food or medication will cause free radicals as we said uh, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase and NADPH are protecting cells from free radicals but here unfortunately they are deficient so the free radicals will cause damage to red blood cells and causing many problems when there's glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency uh, the free radicals will damage red blood cells and these damaged red blood cells taken out of circulation to the spleen and their hemoglobin metabolizes to bilirubin. And as you know, excretion of bilirubin is limited. Then, excessive amount of bilirubin causes trans, and some convert to urobilin. If there is too much of urobilin, urine becomes much darker, tea-like color. And you know that the hemoglobin is rarely excreted directly by the kidneys, but this can occur in severe cases causing acute kidney injury and also glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency causes build up of glucose and thus diabetes mellitus 2 is directly related to glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency and uh, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency causing hemolytic anemia in states of oxidative stress Oxidative stress can result from infection, uh, chemical exposure to medication and certain uh, foods because they contain some chemical substances which are toxic in individuals who have this condition and they are for example baba beans contain visine, diphysine, anvisine. Likewise, uh, henna dyes and falafel sandwiches. What are the causes? Trigger, we have four types. Foods and drinks like fava beans, 
soy products, red wine, and etc. Certain medicines including aspirin, quinine, and other anti-malarial derived from quinine. Mud balls, naphthalene, which are used to repel clothes mats in stored clothing and blankets, etc. And also stress from a bacterial or viral infection. Patients with glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase, uh, to avoid the hemolysis, they have to avoid some drugs and foods. What are these drugs? Antimalarial drugs including primaquine, pamaquine, chloroquine, also some painkillers like aspirin, ibuprofen, quinidine. What are the signs and symptoms? We said there will be hemolysis and because of this we will see many complications like prolonged new natal joints and this possibly leading to kernictures. What's kernictures? It's abnormal accumulation of bilirubin in the brain and other nerve tissues. And the signs and symptoms will be dark tea colored urine, yellow skin, yellow sclera. Also we will see signs and symptoms of hemolytic crisis in response to certain foods, drugs, chemicals and infections like malaise, weakness, abdominal pain. And because of damaged red blood cells, there will be anemia. Anemic symptoms like fatigue, paler, hypotension, tachycardia, confusion, and etc. And because of build up of glucose, there will be diabetic ketoacidosis. And the signs and symptoms will be like nausea, vomiting, excessive thirst. In very severe crisis can cause acute kidney failure and the sign of this condition will be back pain. Blood finding In anemia, we will see normochromic which means the concentration of hemoglobin in red blood cells is within the standard range but there is an inception number of red blood cells. We will see normocytic which means normal red blood cells. So there is anemia, but only due to decreased number of red blood cells. We may say anisocytosis, which means increased red blood cells distribution wide, and poikilocytes means different shapes. You may see bite cells, which means one or more semicircular protein removed from the cell margin, as you see here. and Heinz bodies or hemoglobin deposits in the red blood cells. These Heinz bodies present damage to hemoglobin. Diagnose clinically if there is positive family history, anemia and joints, symptoms of hemolysis after exposure to any triggers. While the tests will include blood tests and in blood tests you will see levels of red blood cells will be low Hyptoglobin will be low, bilirubin will be high, LDH will be elevated, reticulocytes will be elevated. And tests of liver enzymes to exclude other causes of joints. Also, you will see high levels of lactate dehydrogenase. Combs test, direct antiglobulin test, to detect antibodies that are stuck to the surface of the red blood cells, and this should be negative. Butler fluorescence spot test is a direct test for glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, rapid and inexpensive test that identifies NADPH produced by glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase under ultraviolet light.
It can be falsely negative in patients who are actively hemolyzing. Therefore, it's then true two to three weeks after a hemolytic episode. And the last thing we will talk about the classification of globus ex phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. We have five classes. Class 1 is severe deficiency, the activity of the enzyme is less than 10%. Also class 2 is severe deficiency and also the activity of the enzyme is less than 10%. But the difference between two classes in class 1, class 1 is chronic hemolysis, class 2 is intermediate hemolysis. Class 3, moderate deficiency, the activity of the enzyme is between 10 and 60%. and the hemolysis occur only with the stressors. Class 4 non-deficient virin and the class 5 elevated activity of the enzyme. But in both class 4 and class 5 we don't see clinical sequence.